All right, everyone, here we are with ticker symbol ZOM, Zoom Medica Corp. And before we jump into this chart, I want to say welcome to all the first time viewers and investors. Welcome to the channel, Invest for Tomorrow, to all the subscribers. Welcome back. And as we dive into all this chart has to show us, I do want every single investor and viewer to be aware that towards the end of this video, I have a lot of information to share with you guys, an update on the S&P 500 index, how it ran up today, why did it run up today, and also an update on the 10-year treasury to see what's going on and what to expect going into next week, and if this run up could hold and sustain itself. Very important to keep that in mind. So stay tuned for that. We have the tweet of the day towards the end of the video, and for every single investor and viewer that is interested in knowing what ticker symbols I am watching right now as the market is going down, right, into discount territory. This is the best time to be watching stocks, doing your research, and there's no fear of missing out because the lower it goes, the better the prices get. If you want to know what ticker symbols I'm watching weekly, you can join me over at the Patreon. The link is down below in the description. So here we are. ZOM, Zoomedica Corp, has been pulling downwards with the market. It hit a low today here of 141. And the lowest point that we've seen it reach is down here at 133. So 133 is definitely the support level that needs to be broken through if we want to see this fall any lower. But we certainly saw this pull itself back up pretty fast. So our support here, right, from yesterday, 172, super important to keep in mind. I would use that as a midway point if you want to, per se. You can use that point as a midway point from where the stock currently sits and between the next support level so let's go ahead and see um, our resistance level and we're going to see our new support level so the lowest point before the run started was down here at 143 that is our true support like i said if you want to use yesterday's support level as a midway point you can to see how this stock is reacting at 172 but 143 is the support level to watch carefully if that gets broken through then between this point and 133 we could see this hit newer lows now the 50-day moving average here is 185 if that gets broken through we could be on our way down to newer lows new support levels and getting deeper into bearish territory watch how it reacts between that point and 172 and if 172 gets broken through the next point i would use is down here not too far from it at 168 to dissect the chart even further and have a nice exact midway point in that area between 168 and 172 to see if the bulls are trying to reappear or are the bears tearing this one down fairly fast now we're currently slightly above the 50-day moving average of 185 as long as we're above it we're in bullish territory but the bulls need to break through resistance to continue this momentum and that is right here at this point and that's 191 that needs to be broken through i want to emphasize that it needs to be broken through by the bulls turn into a support so they can reach newer highs and new resistance levels. As always, if you found this video helpful and informative, please do so and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to turn on all notifications and not miss a single video that I post. Share this with your friends and community. And don't forget to hit the like button to let me know you watch this video. Stay tuned to the end because we have a lot to cover. And I definitely want you guys to be up to date on all this information about the S&P 500 index and the 10 year treasuries stay tuned we're gonna cover about the s p 500 index we're gonna look at an article talking about what made this run go up how the s p 500 index and the other indexes are doing and the 10 year treasury bond so stay tuned for all this information so we have a lot to cover here and we have the s p 500 index here in front of us and what i want us to be aware of is the fact that yeah today there was a run we need to see if this run can hold itself up and how quickly is it going to actually eradicate itself? Because when I look at the chart, I look at it this way. What do I see and what is it showing me and what is it that the chart is sending a message to me about? So the first thing is I've been looking at the peaks and every time we hit these peaks, right, we go ahead and dip harder. Now, a lot of investors say that 10% so maybe almost 15% is a correction, 15 to 20 is starting to get closer to a crash, and 20 and beyond, we certainly have hit the crash territory. Now, one thing I do want us to be aware of is we almost hit 4,000, we hit 3,950. So I would go ahead and just round this up 
to 4,000 and 10% of 4,000 is 400. We are only around 250 right now. Even though we've been going down and up, down and up, down and up, we're still at 250. So I still see room here if we are in the midst of a correction, right? We need to see. Now, the reason why this ran up, which we see here in our articles, is the fact that dip buyers fuel stock rebounds. So that's the first thing. There are people buying the dip, right? Retail investors, institutional investors, and so forth. Now, the second thing I saw was the fact that there was a rise because of the solid jobs report. I've said this in my other video that I posted. I'm really glad to see this because this is showing not just economic growth or anything like that or possibilities of an economic growth, but our population, right? Our country as a whole jobs reports are looking pretty solid or a little bit better than expected. It's not all about the market. It's not all about us making gains. It's also about our country and our people. So that's cool. Then we also have massive fiscal stimulus and vaccination drives. Those are the two other things driving the market right now, which could be the fiscal stimulus could be a temporary run. Vaccination drives could be temporary as well, just for a few weeks or months. So that's something we need to think about as well. And then we have here our 10 year treasury. So when we go to the five day, you could see it here is at 1.55. Watch, it's going to spike up. And this is what the article was saying as well. Watch, it only took a few minutes. There you go. There's the jump. So what, what it was also saying here was, yeah, the dip buyers fuel the stock rebound and treasury stay steady. So when we look at the treasury, right, on the one day, it was pretty steady. It was kind of going downwards and hanging out sideways until the last couple hours of the day, which we're going to look at right now. Just pay close attention. There you go. There's the spike. 1.5770 right now. And then we put the one month, you know, it's going to spike up higher. So when we look at this, we've been going higher and higher, and this is not going to show its effects yet, probably for the next few days or weeks, or we might see it as early as Monday starting to affect the market if it stays around these levels or actually goes higher. And then the S&P 500 index is going to do what? It's going to actually start to go in the downward direction again. And yes, these jumps here are holding up the market from going in a straight arrow down. But the fact of the matter is that we continue to go in that same direction. And that's what we want to watch for. That's what we need to look for. And that's what we need to be careful about here and not get too excited. Now, if we see some consolidation for a few days or a week, then it's probably something showing strength and saying, hey, this might have been the bottom and every single dip buyer that fueled up the stock rebound was onto something. But right now, I'd rather be a little bit more hesitant and miss out on catching the dip or catching it rebounding from the dip and just kind of watch and see if it hangs out in the same area before making any decisions. Now, I do want every single investor and viewer to be aware that if you're a first time investor or a beginning investor, you know, these type of corrections and crash, they tend to happen in the market. I mean, we went through several of them throughout the year last year, back in September, October, we even went through one in June. Now, the thing about these corrections, quote unquote, that are healthy is because of the fact that when these corrections happen, it allows for bull markets to begin or actually start to stir up to go to newer levels. Now, every single investor before the 2020 market crash had to have diamond hands. That's where that saying comes from or strong, you know, strong willpower to not sell and quickly, you know, get out unless, you know, you've been investing since way back here since 08 and you thought you were going to eradicate all your gains and you took a small hit there because from 08 to there that, you know, everyone's investment mostly would have probably multiplied, you know, anywhere from three to five X on the low end and on the high end, five to 10 X or more. So that's probably someone that went ahead and got out. But anyone that was investing here in 2018 and felt that correction and then started to ride that bull run and then here in 2020 panicked, they learned the behavior. It takes a few years to learn the behavior. So anyone that got in after this dip and you're feeling a little bit worried about this dip, you know, this is where you're supposed to learn. And you're also supposed to think about the stocks that you're in. Do you understand them? And do you see yourself holding them more than a month, more than six months and more than a year? It's very important 
to understand that about the market. You could do speculative plays. You could do penny stocks if you want to. That's not financial advice. I'm not telling you guys to buy, sell, or hold any type of stock. That's an opinion if you want to go ahead and do that. But you need to have a portfolio as well that gives you a foundational ground to understand what your goal is as an investor long term. So these pullbacks, you know, the one we're going through right now, if you feel like it's a big thing, you know, don't worry about it compared to the long run. I mean, look how many times we've been through small corrections or even a crash, right? Like the one we saw in 2020. So any new investor or beginning investor, this is where you're supposed to learn and not run. Okay. Because if you ran back in 08, you would have missed this run. If you would have ran back in 2015 in that dip, you would have missed this run. If you ran in 2018, you would have missed the run from 2019 all the way up to 2020. And if you would have ran from 2020, you would have missed the dip from here to 2021. And I will be saying a story in 2022, 2023, 2024. If you ran from the dip in 2021, you would have missed the bull run for all these last several years. So definitely that's a message to every learning investor, beginning investor, and even experienced investors that are being a little bit hesitant or being discouraged by the market's movement. This is normal behavior. It's part of the market, but this is why you need to know what stocks you're in and which ones give you the conviction to stay. And this is where you're supposed to get the opportunity to go ahead and load up on more shares the more you can. Now, let's talk about the tweet of the day. So the tweet of the day was, what two catalysts so far in the last week have made the stock market reach these lows we have seen? Do you believe the market will have a slight jump tomorrow or continue its trajectory or trajectory, how you were supposed to go ahead and pronounce it and write it? But I went ahead and put trajectory and uh, the word tragic in front of Tory. So everyone's looking at it as a tragic pullback. This is not so far anywhere near a crash we're in a correction and the two catalysts that have happened so far and thank you for the one person that went ahead and commented how they felt and what they were stating but the two catalysts that have happened so far is the fact that the treasury bonds right the 10-year treasury and all the other ones they spiked up pretty fast and then also the date that jerome powell came to speak and try to ease things off and it did the opposite but today we're seeing the effects i guess everyone slept on it and they took advantage of the dip and they bought more shares and the s p 500 ran up a little bit but i do want every single investor and viewer to be aware that we need to watch this carefully we do and there is room here if we're in the midst of a correction for it to pull back a little bit more so what do we do now well my best advice is to pay close attention to the market, start looking for stocks that you want to learn about or you once wanted and invested in, but it was so overpriced and now it's looking like an opportunity, you know, a stock that was probably at $50 and it's at $20, a stock that was at $30 and it's at $20 or $15, you know, and you have a conviction that it could grow, look into those stocks, do your research. This is the time to do research and have all the time in the world to not fear of missing out. And that's one of the best things about pullbacks. Now, hopefully we're not in a crash and we're in a correction, but prepare yourselves. Be prepared and aware. As always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money.